In this video, we're going to investigate the powers of I. So we're going to simplify them as best we can. Um, let's see, so we have I, which we would consider to be I to the first, and that would be the square root of negative 1, which we would just say is equal to I. Okay, the next power of I would be I squared. So that would be the square root of negative 1 squared. And the square root of negative 1 squared would be negative 1. Next we have I cubed. I cubed would be like the square root of negative 1 cubed. That's not really going to do much for us. Ew. Let's see what we can do here. What we might do is we might use the um, multiplication, multiplication property of exponents. And so we can consider this to be like the square root of negative 1 squared times the square root of negative 1. And we know that this is just negative 1. So negative 1 times the, negative, uh, times the square root of negative 1. Yikes. This goes back to i. So this is negative 1 times i. So i cubed could be rewritten as negative i. And lastly, i to the fourth. So that's like the square root of negative 1 to the fourth. What I might do here, I might just rewrite two of these. So the square root of negative 1 squared times the square root of negative 1 squared. Right? If we use the multiplication property of exponents, if we multiply these back together, we would add the exponents, getting us back to 4. And then we know the square root of negative 1 squared is negative 1. And the square root of negative 1 squared is negative 1. And negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. Okay, so the four things we want to think about here is that i to the first is 1, i squared is equal to negative 1, i cubed is equal to negative i, and i to the fourth is equal to positive 1. We want to look at bigger powers of i. So what if I said, okay, what's i to the 729th? Is it possible to use this? Well, if we were to continue this pattern, so if I was to continue and say, okay, next would be i to the fifth, I would consider i to the fifth to be i to the fourth times i to the first. So i to the fourth is 1, i to the first is i, so it's 1 times i, which is i. So it goes back to, this, to the top. i to the sixth would be i to the fourth times i squared. i to the fourth is 1, i squared is negative 1, so this is 1 times negative 1, which would be negative 1. So we might start to see a, a pattern here. It goes i, negative 1, negative i, 1. i, negative 1. I'm guessing i to the seventh will be negative i, right? Because you could be able to write it as i to the fourth times i cubed. And that would, in fact, be negative i. So we do see this pattern. Every fourth number ends up being 1. Or the multiples of 4. When the exponent is a multiple of 4, we end up with just getting back to 1. And then the pattern will start all over again. So any number that's a right after a multiple of 4, like right after 28 is 29, so i to the 29th, will start the pattern over. i to the 30th would be next. i to the 31st would be there. Then i to the 32nd, where 32 is a power of 4, would go back to being 1. Now I said earlier, OK, what's i to the 729th? i to the 729th. You could sit there and count up to 729, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. But I'm guessing you have better things to do with your time. I know that I certainly do. So instead, what I do is I say, OK, what is the closest power, uh, what is the closest power that's a multiple of 4 just under 729? So I want to rewrite this as i to the something times i to the something, where this is a multiple of 4. Why am I choosing a multiple of 4? Well, because I know that if it's a multiple of 4, that it's going to equal 1. And then if I get the closest 1 to 729, the exponent here is either there is no exponent, it's a 1, a 2, or a 3. And if it's a 1, a 2, or a 3, then I can match it up here. OK, so we're going to rewrite uh, i to the 729th as the closest multiple of 4 that we can get to 729 without going over times whatever is left. Um, I know that 4 doesn't go into 729 because 4 is even and even numbers only go into even numbers. So it leaves me with two options. Either right in front of 729 is 728, so either 728 is a multiple of 4 or 726 is a multiple of 4. These are the only two options that are within 4 from 729. So you can use your calculator or if you know the trick for knowing if numbers are divisible by 4, you can use that trick. 
I know that it's this one because the trick from knowing if something's multiple of four is if the last two digits are a multiple of four, which 28 is and 26 is not. So I'm going to rewrite i to the 729th as i to the 728th times i to the first. If I work backwards, I add those together, I get back to 729, so it's all good. Now I know that if it's a multiple of four, that it just equals one, and then i to the first is equal to i, one times i is i. Let's try one more example. Let's uh, determine what is i to the 358th power. So i to the 358th power, either it's a multiple of four, it is even, so it might be, or it's two away from a multiple of four. So what we want to do is we're going to rewrite this so that this is a multiple of four, and this is either a one, a two, a three, or we don't need it at all if this is a multiple of four. So the question is, is 358 a multiple of four? You can either check with your calculator, or you can say to yourself, is 58 a multiple of four? It is not. So that means what would be the even number directly before 358? That would be 356. So we're going to put 356, and then that's two away, so it would be times i squared. Again, if you add these back together, you'll get back there. We know that this, since it's a multiple of four, the, the power is, that it's going to equal one. And i squared, sorry, putting equal sign, is negative one. One times negative one, now I'm using too many parentheses, is negative one. 